Saudi Arabia and Israel are pushing U.S. to confront Iran, Trump shouldn't take the bait. In February, as the Middle East meeting hosted by the polls and orchestrated by the Trump administration kicked off, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, Netanyahu. Posted, yes, thank you, posted an ominous tweet saying that the gathering was to advance the common interest of war with Iran. The tweet was soon after deleted and, re and reposted to read combating Iran, uh, but the implication remained. Meanwhile, a recent Saudi news outlet reported close to Saudi Arabia pro uh, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman urged the United States to launch surgical strikes against Iran after the kingdom accused Tehran of a drone strike that closed down a Saudi oil pipeline. Uh, the article continues to say that America should not av uh, America should avoid war with Iran at all costs um, unless Tehran threatens core American interests, uh, preventing terrorism against Americans abroad or against the homeland, preserving the uninterrupted flow of oil from the Persian Gulf and preventing preventing Iranian acquisition of a nuclear weapon. Uh, unlike Netanyahu, is that right, Armin? Netanyahu. And MBS, uh, who have little interest in engaging Iran, Trump administration would make the effort to open direct contacts with Iran, and Trump has, in fact, expressed that he wants Iran to give him a call, but no such call has been received. So as an update to this that was updated about eight hours ago, President Trump called a national emergency to grant an $8 billion sale in weapons to Saudi Arabia, claiming ongoing tensions with Iran forced this into an emergency situation. Right, so this is a... This is actually update to this news because this what you're just saying happened eight hours ago, right? So right. we had this news posted a few days, three days ago, but what you just added was something that was an update. By the way, uh, Trump is not going to get that call. I, I mean, I follow a lot of uh, Iranian channels, you know, far, because I'm from Iran, so I understand the language. I follow a lot of their news sources and a lot of commentary on it, uh, a lot of, you know, different sides in Iran. Again, Iran, a lot of people talk about the Iranian people or people of other countries as if they're all on the same side. Like they're all, oh, what do the Iranian people think about Trump attacking Iran? Well, like, like people ask me, for example, oh, Armin, what do Iranian people think about Trump attacking Iran? I'm like, well, it depends who you ask, right? Like they don't <laughs> all think the same thing, right? There are a lot of them that are waiting for Trump to attack because they think this is their only chance for to get rid of the Islamic Republic of Iran. A lot of them think that, no, fuck that. Uh, a lot of them support the government. Obviously, they would be against this attack. A lot of them support the government, but they want this attack to happen because they think that they will win this war. Um, and a lot of the, a lot of people are against the Islamic, uh, the Islamic Republic, the government in Iran, and they don't want this war. So there's so many different opinions. Uh, so when people ask me, what do Iranian people think? By the way, if you talk to most of these people, almost all of them try to make it seem like they, their opinion reflects majority. Okay. So if you talk to Iranians that are against this war, they act like they're the majority opinion and if the ones that are for it also like everybody think like like this they but i i don't okay i i'm telling you it's a very divided situation right there right now okay um but one thing that is very okay no actually what one thing that is very common now among politicians at least is that they're anti-negotiation both the hardliners and the so-called reformists right uh, they used to be against each the hardliners and the reformers. They used to be against each other. The hardliners were like, "Fuck negotiation with the United States. Fuck talking to the United States," and the reformers were like, "Yeah, maybe we should talk to the West." Or, you know, but ever since Trump like took the uh, the you know nuclear deal away from Iran, now the hardliners are going to the reformers are like. We told you, you don't negotiate with the United States. And now everybody, everybody is jumping on the no negotiation with the United States bandwagon, right? So if Trump is waiting for a call, like this is, this is, that's a political suicide right now in Iran to suggest talking to the United States, right? So if he's waiting for a call, he might be, I don't think he, unless somebody falls out of line and just grabs the phone without getting permission from the higher ups. You're not going to get that call. Um, but this this is reminding a lot of people 
about the Iran Iraq war with a lot of sorry, not Iran, the US Iraq war, the uh, invasion of Iraq by Bush, right? And there's a lot of similarities and there's a lot of differences. Uh, the similarities are a lot of people are like, oh, we, we heard this narrative before. They're giving us stories about they're hyping this up. Um, you know, they're trying to it was, talk about a threat that it's not there. And we saw the story before. We saw what happened. We regretted it. So, and now it's going to happen again. Right. But, um, and I, I also saw some other anti US news saying that, Oh, the media is doing the same thing they did with the Iraq war. They, they, they just became the government's mouthpiece and they, they, they created the environment to go to war. But no, that's not happening this time. The media is not the government. The media is actually very openly criticizing this. So it's, it doesn't seem like what happened with the Iraq invasion. It seems like you're seeing a lot more pushback against this. And in fact, what you had with the Iraq war that you got the environment needed to get the support of the people to go to war was that you had 9-11. A lot of people were feeling very nationalistic, you know, like, you're like yeah, let's, let's go fuck them up, everybody, right? But now you don't have a 9-11. And I, there might be a lot of people that are hoping for something, for Iran to do something. Some people are even suggesting that they may they're moving you know a lot of u.s armies are being put close to uh, iranian proxies in the region as like a sacrificial lamb for iran to do something so that the united states could have its pearl harbor or its 9-11 as an excuse for an attack right i don't know if that's true that seems very conspiratorial but People are saying that. Again, I don't know. Nobody can know if that's true or not. Um, but again, like Pearl Harbor, you know, you needed before, you know, United U.S. citizens are very anti-war on average, unless something very significant happens. Before Pearl Harbor, United States citizens didn't want to go to war. Then you had Pearl Harbor, then they had the thumbs up. You know, you because of the memories of Vietnam, Americans were very anti-war. Then you had 9-11. They give you the thumbs up. So if this president wants to go to war, I don't know. I don't think. Okay, so Trump is actually right now. This this guy is actually not. His base is very different from other Republicans. So we could talk about that after. But if he did want to go to war, he doesn't have that excuse yet. He doesn't have that attack. They could be like, look, we need to go after them now. Right. So. And Iran is, you know, at, is attacking some interest, but, uh, you know, U U.S. interests in the region. Because Iran, it's not like 9-11. They don't have to come all the way to New York to do something. Iran is, all, United States is all over the place right now, around Iran. So, Iran, with their missiles and with their all their boats and everything around the, in the Persian Gulf and everything, they have so many... U.S. assets right next to them to be able to attack, right? Um, and um, they don't have to come all the way to the United States to attack the United States. Right? They could just attack the United States right in their in their in their back door. But it seems like some people are waiting for that. But right now, Iran think I think Iran is not taking the bait, right? Because they I think they know that this is bait for them to grab, and then the United States then has this go ahead to attack. So they're kind of attacking, but not aggressively because they also don't, because when you also have the Navy ships and stuff going there, they don't want to be acting like, well, we're not going to do anything at all, right? They want to, they, they want to attack it a bit, but not attack it in a way for it to be able to be used as hype against Iran. So again, in Iran, even in the government, there's a lot of division about the best reactions to this, but right, but, the, but the problem is, the United States citizens right now don't have an appetite for war. They don't have a budget for war. They don't have an appetite for war. And it would have been easier for Trump to, to do this if this was his second term. Because he would not, this would really, really hurt his re-election chances if he goes to war with Iran, right? Well, so, if, we, if we're if we active in war, this is 
actually going to improve his chance for re-election if we are active in the war. Why do you say that? Because his this because his Bush, base nine eleven. <laughs> no, but this 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 Republican president is different from other Republican presidents when it comes to his Absolutely. base. When it comes to his base, because his base is anti-war, which is new for a Republican president. I don't think his base is anti-war. It is. It's it's the new right, right? The new the the old right was the neocons. The new right is like focus on home. The new uh, right, the new right was the the Trump's right at least. Was I like, I understand that's what they want. Right. That's what they'll say. Okay, but what they want is whatever Trump says we need. All right, so Trump had to declare a national, and before anyone thinks that I hate Trump or something, I actually don't. Uh, but Trump, what Trump did here was he declared a national emergency uh, to bypass Congress so that he could get this plan approved. And once he tells his base that this is a national emergency and we need this, they're going to follow suit. That's what we do. It's what we've done in America. It's what right, but but that is if we are active in war, hmm. that president will serve a second term. But okay, so you might be right. But the look at what happened after Trump bombed some Assad Syrian interest, mm -hmm. right? In, in Syrian, um, you know, assets and of Assad, right? His base was angry. Like they they did cry foul, like it cr caused a huge division among Trump supporters. Because they're like, we voted for you because we wanted you to stay out of, um, you know, they said like it, it became the new narrative was like it's Clinton and Obama that want to do all these foreign, you know, it used to be like, oh, Republicans were pro-war, Democrats were against it. But the Trump supporters turned that narrative around. We're going to wo vote for the anti-war Trump. It's Clinton that wants to do these like um, attacks, you know, all these uh, foreign uh, Invasions and government changing and so like they're like no we want you to focus at home so the 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 new narrative it, it, I don't know maybe you're right maybe it always works the same but it seems like this this president is different right I'm not no and I agree I mean and, and you're you absolutely right this time is different and you're comparing it to Bush but Bush had Bush didn't just get let's go to war with Iraq Bush had nine eleven to use. Right? You're absolutely right. So, You're absolutely right. I'm just saying historically, it seems that if we start a war, we want to go ahead and, you know, continue and push on. But you're right. This case is different. So I'm I'm not going to if I had to put my money on it, I'd say he wants us in a war so he can win a reelection. Um, I don't know, actually, if he, if he wants a war, because it seems like there's a battle going on in the White House. Right. It yeah. seems like John Bolton types are are pushing him to go to war. And Trump is looking at his base and he's like, eh, maybe we shouldn't. Um, and, you know, it seems like there's a huge disagreement. But anyway, Sobham is saying a lot of Americans are actually sensible for not wanting war. Very unlike many people I know who want a nuclear bomb to be dropped out on Pakistan. Holy fuck. Okay, but just to be clear, I'm not anti-interventionist. There are interventions that make sense, okay? Like Nazi Germany, okay? So right. uh, that, that was a good, like, it's... Just because we're speaking, I think this intervention again and again, intervention against Iran does make sense, but not an outright war, right? There are better ways to act against the Iranian government. This is this is this this is an unwinnable war. Again, I know I'm not trying to defend the Islamic Republic of Iran, but they are a much bigger army than Saddam's army. When United States attacked Saddam. Saddam's government was at the weakest it had ever been. Iran's army right now is at the strongest that it has ever been. Okay? This is an army much bigger, much more powerful, with much more resources, with millions of soldiers, with missiles with uh, that could reach Israel, Saudi Arabia, with proxies all over the Middle East, the chaos that would come out of attacking Iran around the Middle East would be astronomically higher than what happened after Saddam fell. Like think about everything that came out of after the Iraq war, all the you know 
the the rise of ISIS, right? Uh, all these, you know, as Syria, Yemen, um, all of that. That's going to be. I mean, again, I can't predict the future, but it seems it, to me it seems like it's going to be much bigger. The mess will be much bigger compared to what because Iran it has its tentacles everywhere in the Middle East. Everywhere yeah. again, this should be a battle of ideas rather than a battle between militaries. Iran should be defeated the way the Soviet Union was defeated. It should be an ideological battle. It should be a cold war. It should be, you know, you know, spies and assassinations of key figures, and you know, act. You know, I. I at that time, again, when again, United States doesn't have the credibility that it used to have when it comes when it when when it was going against communism, because most when when it was going against communism, most people around the world were looking at com people living under communism and people living under capitalism, and people were like, "Yeah, I want the capitalism one, please, right?" Uh, and United States won that uh, war of ideas, right? People rose up in their own countries and they changed governments. And governments fell because of winning that battle of ideas. This is, but, but the United States lacked that credibility now because of its support for countries like Saudi Arabia. Right, so it can't go and be like, "Yeah, we support human rights now," because you don't, because you support Saudi Arabia. So it's, it can't win. So I guess other people have to win that battle of ideas. But you have to go after the, after the core of, of the ideas that the Islamic Republic of Iran is based on. You have to fight against the idea of Vilayat Fari. But the problem is that it's not like we. Ali, it's not like we understand these things and people that are paid millions of dollars, analysts in the the <laughs> no, they they know these things. But the, the reason why we think like, well, this doesn't seem like a right move. Fight in but but the thing is that it is the right move if you understand their goals. If you understand the people that are people that are funding John you know, you know, Bolton or people that, you know, it's first of all, it's Israel and Saudi Arabia. Right, because they know they don't have the resources to go against Iran, right? right? And and you know, and you have to understand that this will not cause stability in the Middle East. It will ca cause chaos, but maybe chaos is the goal, all right? Because if you think chaos is the goal, then these people are not idiots. It's not like we understand these things, and those people that have studied the Middle East forever and now they're advisors, they don't understand what's going on. Yeah, you have to, you know, again, this, this is going to seem, and I'm, I, I'm going to accept feedback if I'm wrong about this, okay? Because it sounds like a conspiracy theory. But we, we know the effect of lobbies, lobby groups, right? We have studies after studies that show that lobby groups impact directly government policies right and if you look at what the biggest lobby lobby groups in the united states is the weapon industry okay a war with iran might not be a winnable war but maybe winning against iran is not the goal maybe an endless war is the goal okay maybe more chaos in the middle east is the goal what will happen to okay and again oil price is going up it used to be bad for the United States for oil to go up. But now, United States used to be an importer of oil, but now it's one of the largest exporter of, exporters of oil. So oil, oil companies in the United States are there, what impact their lobbying has on United States policies. Oil prices going up used to be bad for the United States. Now it's good for the United States. So chaos in the Middle East might not be something that they're trying to avoid. Uh, Again, this this is conspiracy level stuff. But if you want to <laughs> tell, if you want to say why I'm wrong, I'm, I'm let us know in the comments. Answer answer saying you have been. Have you seen? No, I haven't seen that documentary. I'll check it out if I remember. Renzo is saying the Soviet Union collapsed under its own uh, bloated weight and the nationalist divisions within the USSR. The US didn't do much to trigger. Yep, no, it did because it was people's. Okay, it was the the war against the USSR. It wasn't just inside USSR. It was a global battle, right? And it was a war between 
not just two countries, but it was a war between two ways of life, two ways of living, two ways of two philosophies, right? And people in different communist countries around the world demanded differently, right? And it, it did collapse under its own um, weight, but thanks to also marketing and the promotion of how shitty these ideas are, right? Iran... You know, the PR machine of the Iranian government is very strong. So Iran could also, uh, you know, collapse under its own weight. If we get to do the same level of, you know, promotion and advertisement against its ideology. Right? Because there is a pushback against the nonsense that was communism. That same level of pushback not only doesn't exist. It seems to be bigotry now to, to fight against that kind of nonsense. You know, again, war against communism was an ideological battle. USSR, you know, could have lasted a lot longer if, you know, if, it, if the PR, if it, if he had, if he had won the PR battle. Because we can see by, you know, nonsense ideas could last long if there are a lot of people supporting it i mean if if governments were falling under because their ideas were shit how is iran becoming stronger and stronger in the middle east why is it that they have survived why is it that they have managed to you know they have a very effective pr machine there are people outside of iran all across the middle east that will die for khamenei that are willing to give their lives millions of people that's an effective PR machine. There's no pushback against that. The only pushback against that right now is a military reaction. That's not enough. That's not enough. And that's why you should support the Atheist Republic. Link in the description because we are pushing back. We're small, but we're starting to, we are, again, we have Atheist Republic in Persia now as well. So we are, if you want to help push back against their nonsense, maybe you should support us. Do you see how I slide that in there, Ali? I just, <laughs> yeah, uh, I like that. Self-promotion there. Okay. Shameless self-promotion. <laughs> Anyways, let me see. Oh, Philo from Tennessee. Hi. Thank you for being here. Let's see what the top comments are. Did you want to add anything, by the way? Ali? No, no. Uh, I had a lot of noise, notes here. I don't know if I covered everything. I just went organic instead of following my notes. I think it was. Good. I think I followed. It. I said everything. Uh, Angela saying the first people to fight should be all politicians and their families. Um, I mean that's fun to say, but it doesn't really add that much value. By the way, I did. Uh, I did follow some um, comments in, you know, tr right wing circles and Trump supporting circles to see what the comment section says, and a lot of them are pretty annoyed by supporting Saudi Arabia. So at least there's, I think, again, it does seem like they're not saying like, we'll support Trump for whatever. They don't like that Trump supports Saudi Arabia, at least a lot of them. Jonathan is saying the Israel and Saudi Arabia should confront Iran on their own. Well, Israel and Saudi Arabia do not have the resources to confront Iran. And that's why they're being very clever and they're lobbying United States to get involved. Um, Marco, Marco is saying no money for universal healthcare, social programs or infrastructures, but war, no problem. Um, Brian is saying, of course he shouldn't, which is why he will. I don't know if he will, uh, guys, because he seems to reluctantly. I think this new recent news that you gave, like, right, so he is giving money to Saudi Arabia, right? Because Saudi Arabia is allowing Saudi Arabia to buy weapons. Sorry, so he's taking money from Saudi Arabia the other way around. He's selling weapons. By the way, that's a that's a crime. That's against the United States Constitution, right? I forgot to. Uh, vent on that, by the way, for a second. Oh, because... Armin, we got a super chat. Oh, thank you. Oh, Chris, thank you so much. Uh, Chris is saying, which is goes by RPG here, saying, can we uh, call lobbying what it actually is? Bribery, plain and simple. I'll give you X amount of money. Now let's talk about this bill. Yes, yeah, it's very interesting that lobbying is supported by so many so-called free market capitalists because it go it's very anti-free market when these people get to be involved so much in government right what was i saying yeah this, this another weapons deal with saudi arabia which is 
against the United States own constitution because it's undeniable that you know that Saudi Arabia is using like using these weapons to commit war crimes in Yemen which is the right now the greatest human rights crisis of our time and United States knowingly is selling weapons to Saudi Arabia again the people that are anti-Trump because he said grab them like a pussy or he said a stupid tweet you are anti-Trump for the wrong fucking reasons it doesn't these stupid tweets don't matter this language doesn't matter those those are not the reasons why you should be anti-Trump the fact that he sells weapons to a country knowing that he though that country is going to be dropping it on top of children on top of ports where food and medicine is coming to as to a country that uses starvation against civilians as a weapon that's why you need to be anti-Trump that's why I'm anti-Trump not because of the stuff that the comedians cover and all these people that you know if he said all his stupid shit all his dumb tweets and everything else but had sane policies all those tweets could be excused all his stupid shit that everything that he can't pronounce everything that he every fact that he gets wrong all of that could have been excused None of that would have mattered. Like, but people keep focusing on that. But when he sells weapons to Saudi fucking Arabia, that doesn't get much attention. And I think, I don't know, this is, this just came out eight hours ago. So I don't know. I'm just guessing here. This could be completely wrong. I think he needs to keep his allies happy, which is like Saudi Arabia. And these, these people are like, do something against Iran. And some people, John Bolton is also in in White House, are like, hey, we need to attack Iran. And Trump is like, I don't want to attack Iran because he's his base doesn't want to attack Iran. So he's, I think he's just doing another thing, selling weapons to Saudi Arabia, just to be like, can you have this? Just you know, maybe this would be make them quiet a little bit, and also to because Iran is trying to uh, you know calling their bluff, right? Iran is like, you're not gonna attack. You're just bluffing. You're just trying to put pressure so that we call you, but we're not going to call you because you removed that deal, the nuclear deal, and it looks really bad on us if we call you from a position of weakness when you pressure us. We don't want to negotiate when, when we, if it's from a position of weakness. And we don't think you have an appetite for attacking right, us right now because you're not going to get reelected. You don't have the resources. I mean, think about this, guys. United States could not even remove Assad. United States tried so hard to remove Assad from Syria. And Assad has nothing compared to what Iran has. And they could not remove Assad. Saudi Arabia tried to defeat the Houthis. The Houthis. They have nothing. The Houthis have nothing compared to what Iran has. Saudi Arabia could not defeat the Houthis. They thought it's going to take three weeks. It's now five years. What chance do these people have against Iran? Iran has Iran defeated ISIS in places where the United States couldn't defeat ISIS. Again, I'm not saying this to defend Iran. This is it's sad that we've allowed Iran to become this powerful in the region. And you're gonna you're gonna make a move against that? It's gonna be an endless war. Like this is gonna be a swamp that you're not gonna be able to ever get out of. I don't think they want. I don't think Trump wants to attack Iran. I think they're just trying to bluff. I'm not sure. And you know, and Iran is calling the bluff. I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. We're not gonna call you. They think they're going to put pressure on them for them to call, but I don't think, I mean, Iran was, after the 1979 Islamic Revolution, Iran was so weak. They had nothing. Their whole army was like a mess. And United States could not remove, could not remove Iran then. Now Iran has been the strongest it has ever been. They have their proxies everywhere in the Middle East. Their 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 Hashtashabi is doing so much in Iraq. They 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 
They own half of Lebanon's government now. The Houthis are on their side. They don't even need to send their own army. The Houthis could go and send their head rockets. The Houthis are taking over parts of Saudi Arabia. Nobody covered that in the news, by the way. I mean, the Houthis, Iran doesn't, hasn't even gotten involved yet. And they're, they're causing so much headache for... South, Israel couldn't even defeat Hezbollah. Hezbollah is just one of Iran's many proxies. What kind of... Anyways. Sorry. Went for too long. Uh, no, it's fine. It's all good stuff. Again, if you want to... White House, if you want to defeat Iran, call me. Hire us. I'll give you. I'll tell you how to defeat Iran. Or just find our show, our Persian show. We have Atheist Republic has now a Persian show. Find, donate to that. Forget the U.S. government. We'll 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 do it ourselves. <laughs> just kidding. No, but um, half kidding. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we're doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.